Hey, this is Dustin. And I'm Steve, and you're listening to another episode of the Wedding Photo Hangover Podcast, an irreverent look at wedding photography. This podcast, like aspirin, will help you recover from your wedding hangover. Dustin, 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 Dustin. We are Steven. recording a special St. Patrick's Day After episode today. <laughs> Dustin, if you're That's, listening to so this episode on the internet. It's the St. Patrick's Day hangover cure. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, Dustin, if you're listening to this episode on the internet or, you know, any of our listeners who are listening to it, I uh, that means I successfully completed a 5K beer run. Mm, you're doing a 5K beer run? Yes, that is correct. On St. Patrick's Day, yesterday, if you uh, download this right away, I will uh, be doing a 5K beer run. You will be dead. In Indy, <laughs> where uh, after every mile you run, and there's three, three complete miles in a 5K, after every mile that you run, you drink a pint of beer. Have you been training for this 5K at all? Well, Dustin, I'm glad you brought that up, because right now I am drinking a Lagunitas nighttime. I'm also drinking uh, the Alpha Effect from Heavy Seas, and I got a Guinness 200th Anniversary Ale here. Uh, ale, beer. Guinness 200th Anniversary Beer. It's not an ale. So I'm training real hard right now. Ah, oh, man. Is Jen doing this with you? Yeah, she's the one who signed us up. <laughs> she's been running. I don't, I don't know why she's doing that. <laughs> the drinking part is definitely the part that needs training. That's the part that's going to trip me up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm such Dude. a lightweight. Do you have to drink it while you run? I think you stop at a table. Chug. Uh, that doesn't sound like as much fun. Chug, 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 chug. It's like a four-hour thing. Starts at two, goes till six. So I think afterwards you can just like pound beers in the park and then pass out in the grass if it's not too mm, cold. Four hours to run three miles. <laughs> well, when you're drinking, <laughs> things take longer. Oh my goodness. Dustin, See, what guys, are you doing for St. Patrick's Day? Or what did you do? I th guess we should ask. This is like kind of like uh, Twilight Zony. What did or will you have done? Yeah. What are you uh, recovering from today? <laughs> well, we actually don't have a wedding on Saturday, unfortunately. So we're in this like weird limbo where I'm completely or almost completely caught up on a lot of things. And trying to figure out what we do with our lives when we don't have weddings on Saturdays. Uh, Dustin so, lives a simple life down on the farm. Just, yeah, probably feed the chickens and uh, milk the cows. He's gone back to his roots trying to take photos of Amish people. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't reference that because I cut that out of the Nathan Mitchell episode. <laughs> oh, did you? Sorry, Dustin. Sometimes I feel like I record these podcast episodes and then when I listen back to them, I forget what all we said, and then he, Steve, cuts things out, and so it's like he's editing my own memory of what I said. And so, oh my gosh, it's just like that movie with Robin Williams, where after people die, he edits their life stories because they had like a secret eye camera their entire life, and he makes like a montage clip of everything that happened. But then, Dustin, guess what happens? He is assigned to a project, and apparently, the person who's life story he's editing witnessed a crime so somebody's out to kill robin williams now because he is the only witness dun, what, dun, movie dun. Is, what movie is that uh i don't know like maybe it's called the editor i have no idea what the movie's called i was more thinking about the ben affleck movie that was really terrible where he's working on some like super secret project and part of the project is uh, they delete your memory after you complete the project so mm -hmm. that you can no, there's no corporate espionage involved. You don't have to worry about you like telling another company what you did. Oh, Dustin, are we just going to waste this whole St. Paddy's episode so, talking about movies we've seen that we don't remember that well? <laughs> I was thinking of that Jake Gyllenhaal movie. Uh, I think it was called Code Source where he died... <laughs> But his like body was kept alive, and then like they inserted him into other people's bodies in the past, so he could figure out who committed crimes. But then he was like, "Maybe I don't want to live in this body that's been terribly emaciated in the future, and I'll just jump into this dude's body. And instead of just getting them the information in the future about who committed the crime, I'll actually solve the crime before it happens." And then I'll hook up with some chick I met on the train, because why not, right? Sounds terrible. Yeah. That's Jakey. Jakey Gyllenhaal. 
So, Stephen, let's talk about our favourite Irish weddings we've ever done. That was a terrible Irish accent. Oh, no, oh, no, I thought that was just great. Uh, doesn't, doesn't, before we get into that, I mean, I've already talked about the beer that I'm drinking, and uh, the feedback I keep getting about the podcast is people want more beer talk and less photography talk. <laughs> so what are you drinking? I'm drinking an iced coffee with Bailey's Irish cream. Oh, nice. Yeah, got that today just for the podcast. I'm proud of you, buddy. Um, yep. So, Dustin, Try. on St. Patrick's Day, which was yesterday for the listeners, or for people listening in the far future going through our back catalog, uh, St. Patrick's Day is just a day of the year that may or may not have passed. You might be listening to this next year on St. Patrick's Day. And God bless your soul. Oh, God bless you so much. Um, so doesn't on St. Patrick's Day do you uh, do you do you get green beer? Typically, I do not because see, I am Irish. I hail from the Ireland, the motherland, and your uh, accent should be so much better if that's true. I, I know. How uh, how how many generations past are you from? Five, I think. Mm. Still waiting on my twenty three and me or whatever the hell those DNA blood test see one are. of my grandparents was actually born in the netherlands and then came to america when they were four my other grandparents were born shortly after their parents immigrated to our great country but yeah so you're drinking three beers at the same time with one straw how how is that working exactly for you steven well not well because there's only one straw obviously so i can't drink them all three at the same time unless i pour them all into the same glass i didn't know if it was like a trifecta straw like a trifecta straw where it's one straw and then it comes into three. I've uh, I've actually already finished the Guinness 200th anniversary stout. It was pretty good. Um, I'm now about halfway done with my Lagunitas nighttime. What's that one like? I almost bought that. It's just like a dark beer. Like it, <laughs> there's nothing that stands out about Anticlimatic. it. Anticlimactic. It doesn't taste bad, but it's not like I'd take a drink and I'm like, this is the greatest thing ever. It's just... It has a very dark feel. How does it compare to a, a little, little something? Not as good. Okay. Good. I'd go for a little something, something over this. Uh, and then the other one, the Heavy Seas Alpha Effect is... Um, <laughs> Steve's just got like three beers and he's just like... Oh, man, it's a it's a hazy IPA. Um, mm. It's definitely the thing that I should have saved for last because the other ones are, you know, darker, heavier beers and drinking those after an IPA doesn't really uh, do well for you. Oh, that's a bad idea. You want to start with like your wheats and your light beers and then work your way into like your stouts and your porters and then finally hit up those IPAs right at the end. Oh, Steve, you're so... I, I don't drink like this every single night. Oh, he does. <laughs> he does. <laughs> no, the, the Lagunitas Nighttime was like a, it's like a 250 milliliter, 750 milliliter or something like that. And we didn't finish it. So we had like corked it. Then I opened the Guinness and my wife opened the Alpha Effect and she didn't want to finish it. So I'm finishing it. They call him Backwash Steve. I'll finish anything. Uh, anything that my family started out drinking. I'm not, I'm not just going up to strangers at parties. I'm over that stage of my life now. Stranger danger. Hey, you going to finish that? No, nah, dude, you don't even ask. You just grab and drink. Mm. It's Tasted college. A little, a little bit of spearmint. Did you have some gum while you drank this beer? Nah, mm. it's just chewing tobacco I've been spitting in there. I can't believe you drank that. No, mm, mm. I swallowed. Yuck. Uh, so, doesn't you put in this? Has Steve ever shot an Irish wedding? And Steve would like to go ahead and say no. He <laughs> has never like to shot. To third person. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to push this episode forward. I've never shot an Irish wedding before. One of my 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 former high school roommate married a girl whose family was Irish, and they had an Irish wedding. That's I mean that's not the same as shooting. So I, I've got nothing to go on here. But the Irish wedding was a lot of fun to be in. As a groomsman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you get to wear a kilt? No, because that's more of a Scottish tradition than an Irish one. Mm. Mm. Wikipedia that, that. It's a true fact. Yeah. So I have shot an Irish wedding mm -hmm. where the groom was from Ireland, like direct blood from the Irish land and was over here on like a scholarship for soccer and met obviously the love of his life and they got married. But it was cool because uh, instead of getting her like a traditional like diamond wedding ring he got her an emerald ring so it was like green oh, that's cool so, yeah so that was super sweet and um but there other than that there weren't like a ton they did like uh 
the Irish blessing toast at the reception. There was a, a lot of drinking, but I don't know if I would say that's um, special to an Irish wedding because here in Indiana and in the Midwest, a lot of the weddings we do, there's a tremendous amount of drinking like Steve's doing right now. Uh, and then we, we've we actually done a Scottish wedding, which like Steve referenced earlier, they wore kilts. And that was super cool until we realized in the Scottish traditions, uh, if you really go with the rules hard and fast on kilt wearing, you don't wear any undergarments. That is correct. And so the older generation that were in attendance at the wedding, that were sitting in the front row of the ceremony, that were graciously open their legs while we were photographing back towards the guests. Uh, that made for some unique photo editing opportunities. <laughs> I don't understand what you would edit in that. I, I would darken the area between their legs. I don't understand why you would need to do that. Mm. Uh, for the grandchildren, Steve, for the grandchildren. I don't know, Dustin. So was everybody there talking like glum gold uh, just to, to, to tease our next episode? <laughs> Where we do some DuckTales trivia. Um, Glumgold being Scrooge McDuck's arch nemesis. Who's Scottish. There we go. There we go. We're back. Oh, did they talk like <laughs> Glumgold McDuck? <laughs> I can't do it. Damn. Well, you tried an Irish accent. I tried a Scottish one. We both failed. Good times what's your, tonight. What's your What's your Irish accent sound like? Oh, we're getting a wee bit of the Irish in us. <laughs> Sounds like a... <laughs> it's like the Lucky Charms character. <laughs> oh, they're always after me, Lucky Charms. <laughs> Oh, would you try a scoop of this shorebird? Well, we just lost all of our listeners from Scotland and Ireland in uh, one fell swoop tonight. For those of you still here, I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. Dustin and I will stop. We'll go back to making fun of uh, American things. The Finnish crowd and the Netherland crowd are still coming strong. So you shot a wedding. There are a lot of Scotsmen there, and uh, you got to see some old man dong. Old man dong. And you got Freshen. the pictures forever, right? You saved yeah, the raw we'll, photos, not just yeah, that. Yeah, I'll post that on Instagram unedited for you, Steve. <laughs> and that's the story of how Dustin got kicked off of Instagram. Dustin, you asked if I would wear a kilt, and the answer to that is 100% yes. You look like a kilt guy. Why wouldn't you wear a kilt? It'd be fun. Breezy. I was just perusing some Irish wedding traditions over on uh, the Google sphere, and uh, the not.com Welcome to the Google sphere with Dustin McKibben. Our newest new segment, Google Sphere, Google Sphere, Google Sphere, Google Sphere. Is that how you do it? <laughs> sure, Steve. <laughs> Better than mine. But the not people. The Google Sphere, brought to you by Dustin McKibben. I like to think that the people at the not like live in this like knotted village of ecosystem. Um, but they said that they eat knotted bread. They knot their shoes twice. They're, ve they're very knotty. They don't have zippers on their pants. They knot them up. <laughs> and their favorite joke is to tell you something as if it were true. And when you're like, really? They go, not. <laughs> I think we just came up with a whole ad campaign for the not. <laughs> not. It's completely irrelevant to what they do. <laughs> this episode is sponsored in part by the not dot com. Uh, I thought you were going to say this episode is brought to you by Wedding Wire. <laughs> 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 um, but anyways, they went on to talk about some of the wedding traditions uh, in the Irish area. And one of the things they said were bagpipes as well as kilts. They said lots of big Irish families have family members who are in pipe bands. I thought that was a little presumptuous to assume, assume every Irish family just happens to have someone that knows how to play the bagpipes. But that's neither here nor there. It's like how every American family just happens to have somebody who knows how to play the guitar. Right? And they, yeah, absolutely, Steve. Absolutely. But they also said that most pipe wearers wear a Celtic kilt. And so I just assumed that meant that they would have worn them in Irish weddings. But then it goes on to say that the Irish aren't allowed to wear them during the British rule. But mm -hmm. now that the British rule is over, they now slip them on for special occasions. Ooh, slippy. But well, like the British said, rules over for some of them, right? Yeah. Oh, but it is often regarded as a Scottish fashion statement. Mm -hmm. so. It's sad that we're not doing like a Scottish themed episode so we could talk about like, like the Loch Ness Monster and cool stuff. Uh, it's, unfortunately, there's no St. Scotland's Day, St. Scotty's Day. 
one of the other fun traditions that I've never seen done, but I thought would be super hilarious to see was uh, apparently in Irish t- tradition, there was a lot of men that would get cold feet during uh, the wedding ceremony time frame. And so they leave. put their feet on coals the entire wedding to keep them nice and warm, <laughs> keep them toasty. They roast some marshmallows down on there too. They have it some more while they're getting married. <laughs> mm. Little hot dogs, little hot dog on sticks. Well, I'm not going to say anything about the size of their aubergine, Dustin. Whoa, come on, dude. That's not cool. You always try to take this in a vegetarian direction. <laughs> Forgot that you're a carnivore, a real meat eater over there. I, I actually had one of those cauliflower pizzas tonight for dinner. That sounds disgusting. No, it was really good. More on that later. No, I don't want to hear any more on that. That's that's a disgrace to pizza. That's a pizza crime. Uh, or health. That was a 400 calorie entire pizza I consumed. Pizza crimes. Mm, I feel like you need some law and order music there. Pizza crimes on the hard streets of McKibben land. <laughs> there are people who eat real pizza and there are people who eat cauliflower. This is the story of those who eat cauliflower. Dun, dun, dun. But what they would do is they would lock the doors to the church so that the groom couldn't leave uh, to prevent him from... And the British can come in so he could wear his kilt. Correct. But I just think it's funny that if uh, so many Irish men would get cold feet, I don't know what that says about the uh, commitment level of their marriages. Lots of people get cold feet who want to actually get married, but they just have troubles with commitment. Mm. I don't, I, don't, I don't think, you know, I don't know why you're you're putting these people on blast. Anything you want to talk about? Get off your chest about uh, perhaps, I don't know, your own My marriage? feet were cold every single night um, because Jen always stole the blankets when we first got married. And now I just wear socks to bed and it solved that problem. But it's created a new problem for sex. <laughs> you can't wear socks during sex, Dustin. It's a rule. Please, please leave all of this in. Leave it all in. And the last thing I wanted to touch on, and this is probably the most familiar thing you'll see if you ever do any Irish wedding, whether it be full of traditions or not, is uh, the typical traditional Irish wedding toast. And I'm not going to sing it for you, Steve, but uh, if you want to, you're more than welcome to. But it's where the wedding party and the family will gather around the groom with typically lots of alcohol and they will sing a little chant and it's very, it's very fun to photograph. I'm sorry, what is the chant that they sing? Oh, you know. Because usually when people do a chant, they chant it. They don't sing it. But I'd love to hear this song. The song version? <laughs> yeah, the song version. Can you song the, it up the, for me? The, the Disney version? Sing it up, buddy. Come on. Oh, I wish we had time for that. But unfortunately, we needed to move on to... Steve wanted to talk a little bit about wedding, uh, in particular, St. Patrick's Day wedding ideas on if you wanted to do a themed wedding. Uh, So if you haven't planned your wedding for this Saturday yet, and you're going to listen to this episode the day after. (laughs) Oh, you done screwed up unless you have a time traveling device. (laughs) Which is totally plausible. We have a large sect of our listeners that are into time travel. No, so Dustin, I included two leaks, one from The Knot and one from Bridebox. And they were ideas for St. Patrick's Day themed weddings. And mostly I just put them into our show notes because they were so utterly ridiculous. It's like, oh, you've got a St. Patrick's Day wedding. Let's put a shamrock on it, shall we? Let's put a wee pot of gold at the end of a rainbow for everyone. And uh, I just thought it was was incredibly disrespectful and terrible. Um, But there was one thing that I really loved. And that was... uh, That's my idea. That was my idea. Oh, let's give everyone a shamrock shake from the McDonald's. The finest (laughs) Irish cuisine in all the land. Come on down to Ronald McDonald's. We'll have a great old time. I thought it was good. But it's even better when it's said with that voice. Because we love Irish people. We love how they sound. Oh, and when you're here at McDonald's where we have all the red and the yellow, let's take another idea from the Dustin McKibben playbook and let's dress everything up in green. Oh, that was good. I'm going to have to cut all that out, aren't I? No, that was perfect. I loved every bit of it. That was the best. So... Uh, I just thought all the ideas were ridiculous because it's basically like playing into stereotypes that Americans mm-hmm. have about the Irish and about St. Patrick's Day, uh, which from what I know, St. Patrick's Day is not really a celebrated holiday in Ireland from what I've heard. Oh. Yeah. Like over here, people are just getting drunk and going crazy. And in Ireland, they're like, it's just another day, guys. Come on. Especially in Boston, in the New England area, <laughs> man. 
they they take St. Patrick's Day like it's a battle. It's a fun I, day. It's a fun day in America. I don't know if it's a fun day in the rest of the world, but in America, it's all about getting drunk and having fun. Unless you have a newborn child and a two-year-old. And a leprechaun who might take them away from you. Yeah, for real. Dustin, is your mic going to be okay? Because when you just fake fell asleep, you totally destroyed it. My mic is fine, Steven. Uh, so there was one good idea from both Bride Box and The Knot, and it was to make a groom's cake that was a Guinness cake. So like a Guinness beer um, cake. And I, I love that. I think No, I think that's dumb. I would do... <sighs> The uh, one idea I thought was I'm sorry. cool. Let's back up. You think that making a cake with beer is dumb. What podcast are you on right now? Do you know where I... you are? Do you know <laughs> where you are? You're in the jungle, baby. <laughs> sorry, just some chasing status. It's an Irish band. So are you done? Are you done? I'm done. Let's let's get some some dr- drum bass up in here. Some DMB. I liked the idea of the Bailey's infused cupcakes. I thought that was a very good homage to the Irish. Is Bailey's even an Irish brand or is it just an American brand that's cashing in on Ireland? Bailey's Irish cream. I'm just curious, bud. That's above my pay grade. Okay. Yeah, no, I I would do Bailey's Irish cream cupcakes. That sounds great. But I mean, that's the same vein as the Guinness (laughs) groom's cake. It's the same idea. Let's take something alcoholic and bake it. Less, less cheesy. Uh, it's cheesy the way they did it, where they made it look like a Guinness bottle uh, on the bride box and the knot. Well, yeah, that's what I'm referencing. It's not a cheesy idea to have a beer cake, though. That's awesome. Have you ever had beer cake or beer bread even? Mm. No. It's good stuff, buddy. Good stuff. Doesn't, let's let's move right on to some Q&A. Are you ready for this? Hey, everybody. This is Jason. And Jeff. And Blake. And we're the History of Bad Ideas podcast. And if you like hearing uh, geeks talk about Fisto from He-Man. Or zombies or dragons or zombie dragons. I was given copy to read, but it's a piece of crap. So if you just like any geek or any fun stuff, just listen. We drop every Wednesday on iTunes, Stitcher, Tangent Bound Network, or WeBeGeeksPC.com. Oh, God, I'm out of here. And remember to wear a coat. Let's do some Q&A. But, but Steve. Shane from the Facebook groups. Okay, his name isn't just Shane. His name is actually, I shouldn't be sharing this, but it is Shane McShane. <laughs> what? That's his, too good. His name is Shane McShane. <laughs> Could he have a more Irish name than that? I just I just want to meet the parents of someone. That'd be like, so my last name is McKibben. So that'd be like if my parents named, oh, what should we name him? Let's name him Kibben. Kibben McKibben. So that he can spend the rest of his life being called Kibben and McKibben. Which, in, if for those of you who don't know, in Ireland, Mick, the MC, stands for son of. Uh, it doesn't start for, stand for Masters of Ceremony. No. I just assumed this whole time that your name was Dustin Masters of Ceremony McKibben, uh, which is why you decided to be a DJ, because it's already in your name, basically. DJ! So sad. Um, So Shane McShane says, was asked to take a picture of two cathedrals lit up green for St. Patrick's Day. I took their pics. One of the cathedrals isn't as bright as the other in my picture, though. And he he literally just asked people to edit it for him to correct it. But I thought it'd be a better idea to uh, ask, how do you fix this while editing? You changed his question? Oh, yeah, 100%. Because I don't leave questions in where people are like, can someone do this work for me that I don't want to do? You also read it wrong because how he really said it was, I took three pick. Yeah, uh, doesn't I sometimes I sometimes mistype things <laughs> when I enter them into the Google Docs. I had this whole joke worked up about him being an overachiever. <laughs> I took three pick. Uh, he might have taken three pictures and you know kept the best one and posted it to the Facebook group. So doesn't how do you how do you fix that when you go to edit if one of the photos is not as bright you or one of the buildings? It's- it's un it's unfixable. You Steve. heard it here from Dustin. Unfixable. 
Now, if I had a friend, perhaps, that owned a little company I like to call Bispokton. I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, Bispokton. I'm um, sorry, what was that? It sounded like uh, it sounded like there was maybe a leak that somebody was trying to plug. I mean, you take that into Photoshop and you just get a brush out and brighten it up. <laughs> the one, I mean, it's that simple. If you, it, that's like a, I, I mean, you wouldn't just take a brush out because then you'd get like the weird like thing where the brush was feathered or whatever, where it didn't look right, or where maybe your brush stroke went out. So you'd have to do like a masking effect to like mask out everything but the green and just, just that area, just and get, then just brighten the, the green in that area. Just, just sort of brush it. Just, your yeah. visual jokes where you pull out an actual brush and start brushing the camera on your computer aren't going to work in an audio <laughs> podcast, Dustin. Just want to help visualize myself what audio you're talking about. Audio podcast. I'm a hands-on uh, Audio. For those of you out there uh, that would like Steve to do a demo on his cathedral brightening skills... Uh, please shoot us a message, and I'm sure we can uh, whip one of those up for you. Right, Steve? Audio podcast. I'm going to edit that so it sounded like I was saying audio the whole time you were saying that sentence. It's going to be awesome. Okay. Anyways, uh, Julie from Facebook asks... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. no, Dustin, don't even attempt this one. It's so long. I'm a low-budget photog of decent quality. My fiance's cousin got engaged. They picked a date. It's four weeks before ours. Whatever. I love them. Okay. So now she asked me to shoot their wedding. And it's on St. Patrick's Day. How lame is that? And it will be the same colors as my wedding. Light blue. And here's an editor's note. What the fuck? Sorry. WTF. How can you have a St. Patrick's Day wedding and choose light blue as your color and not green? But that's just me. Um, so then she, the, uh, Julie edits it to say, okay, I told her 20% off and I'll pay for the editing since it's my choice to not edit the images because she was going to send them away because she didn't want to worry about them. But she was asking, how much do you charge relatives? Do you give them a discount? She charges 1500 for a wedding typically, and an engagement session is included in that. But is that enough money? What do you think, Dustin? Oh, it's a lot to take in. That is for certain. Um, I don't know. Family's tricky. We've talked about this a little bit in the past on the podcast, handling family. I don't know. It's on St. Patrick's Day, though, so I would charge double. But it's family. Right. Charge double for family. I think that's what we decided last time. Always, always charge your family straight out the ass. They got the money and you know hard, it. Hard and fast rule. You charge double. Yeah. When it comes to family, Dustin's always hard and fast. Oh, I got my wife. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it's a good thing she doesn't listen to this podcast because I'm leaving that one in. I uh, figured you were. So charge $1,200 and then you got to pay the 160 to have them edited. So you probably make about 1000 when it's all said and done. Um, so what you have to ask yourself really at the end of the day, is how hungry are you? I don't know. Dustin, are you, are you hungry right now? Did you, did you skip dinner tonight? Oh uh, no, I Steve. I had a delicious cauliflower cheese pizza, but no, seriously um, though. Just a sec. Yeah. Uh-huh. Hey Dustin, what's your address? Okay. What? Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I got that Dustin. Don't worry. I'll edit that out of the podcast. Um, so yeah, I'm going to need a large pepperoni pizza sent to, oh, sorry. Yeah, no, I'm making a podcast. I'm going to, I'm going to edit the address out and I'm, I won't leave your voice in Mr. Domino's man. Uh, large pepperoni pizza. Uh, Dustin, do you want, you want some breadsticks, some garlic knots? Um, you all of it. You want one of those all little of cookies too? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my, my, my podcasting partner, he, He's hungry. So I'm I'm, mm. I'm, I'm going to need a pizza sent straight over to his house. Do you guys deliver beer? No. No beer delivery? Okay. Welcome well, to that, Indiana. that sucks. <laughs> and uh, you're a terrible company, but I'm going to place this for it anyways. So, um, yeah. Cool. Oh, no. He'll pay for it when it gets there. He, yeah. He's definitely paying for it. Cool. Okay. Bye. All right. Got you a pizza, bud. Don't worry about it. Thanks, man. Appreciate um, it. So did you want to get back to this question now that we're done talking about how hungry you are? 
So really, Julie, what it comes down to is you're going to be at the wedding anyways. Would you prefer to make money and shoot or would you prefer to spend the time enjoying a wedding with your friends and family? Oh, man. I got to tell you, Dustin, from my position, I'd prefer to make money and shoot now. Right. That's how I would be. I used to think I would prefer to enjoy the wedding, but the last few weddings I've been to for family members have not been enjoyable at all. It's been some of the most stressful situations of my life where I'm just running around constantly trying to keep my kids in check, and I would much rather be shooting and not worrying about that. I agree 100%. Which means leaving my kids with like my wife's family or something, because those two weddings were both for my family members. Julie, answer your question. G- give them that discount if you want, Julie. Come on, go for it. Make a thousand bucks, buy yourself a new lens. And it's St. Patrick's Day. As soon as you're done with the wedding, you, you just made $1,200, $1,000 after you pay for the editing. You just go straight to the nearest bar and you buy everybody a round of drinks. You know who you're going home with after that? Anyone you want or alone because, you know, whatever, it's your day, right? That's right. You can buy friends. You can buy sexual partners as well. Mm, gosh, nope, 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 yep. nope, nope, nope. All right, Dustin, uh, you want to take this next one? Gentry from the Facebook group asks, Usually I don't drink at weddings, but I'm shooting one on St. Patty's Day this year. Should I make a special exception? Also, should I wear green to the wedding? Um, That's a great question. I would totally take advantage of St. Patrick's Day as an opportunity to completely obliterate your business um, by getting blackout drunk and make the excuse that, oh, I don't need to deliver any focused photos. What is this? What is this? Come on. Come on. Uh, What's... I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying to go with you here on this, but I I don't understand this accent you're doing right now. Oh, this is just me. Uh, were you going for Irish? Because I heard your Irish and it was cool. No, it wasn't Irish. But uh, now now it's like you're going high English or like fairy tale or something. Yeah, I was high high, high English is what I was going for. Because earlier when you tried to do Irish, you went like uh, almost Cockney like English, uh, like the first time you tried in this episode. And so I'm just trying to get where we're going here. Yeah, that was high English. Okay. I didn't even try for Irish that time. I'm going to get a wee bit of the Cockney and a wee bit of the High English in here. <laughs> so, yeah, I know I would say, uh, should you make a special exception? Yeah, go ahead, go go the hell ahead. Because if you don't have a drink, one singular drink during that St. Patrick's Day wedding, everyone there is going to remember you as that terrible piece of crap who didn't party with them. And nobody's going to want to hire you because they're going to think that you're a stick in the mud. So I would say you have one drink. You don't have to have multiple drinks. Have one drink. Do it. Yeah. Go for it. I mean, we've both come down pretty hard in the past on not having alcohol when you're shooting a wedding. But uh, I would say, you know, if you're going to make one exception one time in your life, do it on St. Patrick's Day. Boom. But doesn't, I think the real important question there was, should I wear green to the wedding? I think you should wear a green suit. Entirely green, right? Entirely green. Because, like, my first thought was maybe just a green tie. But the more I thought yeah. about it, I was like, maybe a green suit with a green hat and green oh, sunglasses. Yeah. I'd wear like a green camera strap. Oh I would, yeah. I would. I would get a decal for my camera so it was green. I go all out, all out. But I'm Irish, so you know. My husband's in my brother's wedding. This is from Yahoo Answers. My husband is in my brother's wedding, and I'm not? So I am wondering, how dressy should I be, since my husband will be in a tuxedo? Does anyone have any ideas? Update, it's on St. Patrick's Day. (laughs) I like it. It's like, as if, like, that changes everything it does change everything dustin uh let me go ahead and tell you how dressy you should be as a guest at a saint patrick's day wedding um shorts and flip-flops it doesn't matter how you dress because everybody's gonna be so drunk what's funny is uh hey, how much how much uh how much vomit and barf is gonna be all over your husband's tuxedo um yeah a lot so does it matter what you wear no because it's gonna be your vomit and barf on his tuxedo so he's going to be unhappy with you no matter what. But, you know, party. Uh-huh. Get it done. 
I had a similar situation arise. You uh, barfed on Corinne at a wedding? <laughs> this this year, um, one of my good friends' sister is getting married, and he was, there was sort of this inkling that his wife might get asked to be a bridesmaid in, in your wedding. wedding. No, in their wedding. No, no, I'm, I'm trying to set this up. So track it, track it, Steve. You, you had a friend who's getting married. I, I have a, no, I have a friend's sister who's getting married. A friend's married. sister's getting married. Corinne was asked to be in the wedding, but you weren't, even though you're friends with the people and she's not. <laughs> no, no, Steve, come on, come back, okay. come back a notch. So Corinne's sister was getting married <laughs> and you were asked to be in the wedding, but Corinne wasn't. There was no wedding. There was no friends. <laughs> oh, okay. So you don't have any friends. Oh, this story's starting to make sense now. <laughs> tracking? Are you tracking where we're going? I'm already married, so I don't I don't know. Who who's getting married? <laughs> no one. I've never been to a wedding. I don't know what weddings are. Back to the story was that my friend's sister was getting married this Your summer. Your friend's sister's brother's boyfriend's cousin's <laughs> best friend is getting married because that's how removed we are from the situation now. Yes. All right. Moving on from Yahoo. Yeah, do you want to finish that out? What happened no. when Danny's friend Tanya married <laughs> Steve's brother's Ricky? Let's just say he's now on the bachelor. <gasps> uh, Dustin. Who is from it? Ya from Yahoo Answers. Was it the dude who broke up with the girl when they were already engaged? And then he came to the door and he like knocked on the door. But the way he knocked on the door was like how you knock on the door when somebody's like throwing up or something. At least that's what I read somebody saying on Twitter. And I was like, yeah, it makes total sense. And then like I saw Robert Mueller do the same thing on SNL the next week. And I was like, oh my gosh, I totally get it now. Like that? Yep. Yeah, I'm drinking a lot tonight, guys. Sorry. <laughs> From Yahoo Answers, does anyone know or have a guesstimate as to how much it would cost to book the band in sync for <laughs> my wedding? Um, which doesn't seem like a St. Patrick's Day related question, but the best answer on Yahoo Answers for this was, it would cost five unicorns, three leprechauns. <laughs> Just a wisp of fairy dust and half a dozen pure of heart yet unrealistic fantasies stolen from little girls dreaming of their weddings. Which is the best answer I've seen on a Yahoo Answers in a long time. The question was asked after NSYNC broke up. <laughs> so it's recent. It's a recent question. <laughs> no, it's 2008. They've been broken up for over 10 years. You really did a deep dive to find these questions, Steve. Oh my gosh, when you said you wanted to do a St. Patrick's Day episode, I was like, that's a terrible idea, because I knew how much work it would be for me. And the work was put in. Yeah, I was actually surprised you were sending me topics for this one. I was like, what is going on? Who's this Dustin character? Oh, uh, that was just put together by our producer. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Wedding Photo Hangover Podcast with your hosts, Dustin and Steve. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook at Wedding Photo Hangover and on Twitter at Wedpick Hangover. You can find Dustin on Instagram at Dustin underscore McKibben. Not Matt Kibben. And you can find Steve at at Stephen Van Elk. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time your head is pounding, your limbs feel like dead weight, and your entire being is aching for the sweet, sweet, so sweet embrace of death. That's right, next Sunday after you shoot another wedding or run a 5K beer race. <laughs> Either or. Um, they're both so I'll, common. Really? Wedding, 5K beer race, they're pretty much the same I thing. feel like I'm in a 5K beer race every week, minus signing up and uh, training and running. I really hope there's photos and video of this. Can you actually, Steve, as a, as a listener of this podcast... You know, I'll bring the drone. I'll just fly it the whole time that I'm running. <laughs> All right, Dustin. Thank you so much for doing this podcast with me tonight. Uh, I already said thank you and have a good night, so that's where it's going to stop. Do you want to say thank you and have a good night, too? <laughs> not going to tee up the interview for next week? Not, not the way you did it. <laughs> All right, thanks. Have a good night, Steve. We'll be back next Sunday with an interview with Heidi Thompson, author of Clone Your Best Clients and founder of EvolveYourWeddingBusiness.com. Heidi brings some much needed marketing wisdom to the podcast. Also, we have a ton of fun.
Oh, they're always after me, lucky charms. 